Hello, this is Will Lucas. Welcome to my video blog, Surfing with Cancer, my second Vietnam. This is the 13th and final in a series I started a year ago. 50 years ago, I returned from Vietnam, put the war behind me. About 20 years ago, my mom handed me a stack of letters that I'd written home. I couldn't believe it. I took the time and put it in a book called uh, Mail Call, which I gave to my family. And I put it away again until two fellow engineers found me on the internet, Joey Papone and John Patella. Over the past year, I've been producing these videos as part of my self-therapy for a uh, battle with terminal cancer. As someone who is once again short, I felt it important to draw upon some of the survival skills that I learned in Vietnam. Denial, engagement, and love. I think denial is best said in the movie, What About Bob? If I fake it, I don't have it. Engagement for me is a lot of things. Over there was music, thoughts of surfing, and today it's producing my surf documentaries. Love, knowing the people around you, care. This attitude was evident in my letters home from Vietnam. And while my letters provided a good timeline, they hid a lot of the facts. I quit writing in June, so my July blog relies on my memory, as well as help with about nine guys I reunited with this year. The reunion was incredible in many ways. We had simply walked away from each other 50 years ago. C Company, 4th Engineers, was different. We trained together for 18 months, starting in Fort Lewis, Washington, before moving out to Vietnam by ship. Finally arriving in Vietnam on July 30th, 1966. Our first duty station was in Pleiku. We hit it just in time for the monsoon season. Our job basically was to build this base camp at Dragon Mountain for the regular infantry to move in. And once we accomplished that, we were selected to move south to a place called Dao Chang. And finally, after a three-day extension, many of us were on our way home. Our first stop was a reception center, and just like my first full day in the Army, I was yanked out of line because my hair had grown a little long and I hadn't shaved. The sergeant on duty threatened me by saying he'd be on the plane at 4 o'clock the next morning and yank me off, telling me I wouldn't go home if I didn't obey orders. Of course I didn't. What we did is another friend and I went to the bar, a little local bar there on the uh, reception center where a Vietnamese band was playing and we proceeded to get pretty wasted. Uh, for some reason, we stepped outside, um, punched each other out, and just like any good soldiers do, we put our arms around each other and went back in the bar for some more drinks. The next morning, we were on the Freedom Flight. We stopped in Guam, and from there, I sat next to a young man who was a door gunner on a helicopter. And I realized at that point, the wounds weren't over. They had just begun for many of us. Here we were, supposed to adjust to life at the stateside. I mean, my duty was mild compared to some, worse than others, but still a heck of an adjustment. And finally, we arrived in San Francisco. I remember getting down on the ground and kissing it. I had told my parents I was going to go off to Hawaii and do a little more surfing before I came home. And the, my buddy and I decided that we were going to party in San Francisco. But well, we didn't do any of that. We were so tired and so homesick that we just left the following day after getting a hotel. I never called my parents to let them know I had returned stateside. I didn't want anything to go wrong. My buddy's mom picked us up in the D.C. airport. and She drove me to the bottom of the hill where I lived. I was in a dress uniform carrying my uh, duffel bag over my shoulder, walked up the top of the hill hoping my mom would be there. And sure enough, there she was, standing in the kitchen window. We exchanged glances and she came running out. It was an incredible experience. I was home. But I was also selfish. I did the family thing for about a week and then I had to go surfing. So I bought a new uh, 910 Greg Knoll Decat and uh, headed off to Ocean City. I had uh, a month of leave plus some travel time and I spent the majority of that in Ocean City. A lot of my friends were up there working and having a good time so I got to surf a heck of a lot that summer. But it was a summer of love and for the first time I saw drugs 
and acid, and asked what in the heck they were doing. I wasn't going to go that route. It just wasn't for me. Eventually, fun time was over. I reported to Fort Bragg. I never felt comfortable wearing that patch. I hadn't earned my wings, and there were a lot of brave people who did. My job for the next six months was basically to pick up trash and fix coffee for my sergeant. On weekends, I'd always take off surfing either in Ocean City, Maryland, or the beaches in North Carolina. I was selfish. I wanted to see my friends and party, and my parents suffered as a result. It's kind of a weird time. Um, just like traveling home, there was a subtle disrespect going on. I was never spit on or anything like that. But you didn't wear your uniform out in public a lot. It was just not a good thing to do. In fact, driving home from, to D.C. from Fort Bragg once, I got a ticket in Emporia, Virginia by Officer Barefoot. I was in uniform at the time, thought he might give me a break. Didn't help at all. Probably hurt, as a matter of fact. In October 1967, there was the March on the Pentagon, and we were chosen to convoy up to D.C. and open jeeps, really cold, um, and guard the Pentagon. I got there, and I was supposed to have a dress uniform. Nobody told me that. I ended up getting a suit and walking around the Pentagon. I had free access to anything. Uh, I was the communication guy, and I saw a lot of stuff, and uh, I realize people have a right to protest, and they do. They don't have a right to get violent, but neither do the people guarding the Pentagon. And I saw some disgusting acts by some people in uniform, just taking belly clubs to these kids' heads for no apparent reason, just shoving them in the bus like cattle and hitting them, and it was ridiculous. It angered me a lot, and um, from that point on, I just thought, you know, I. I went to Vietnam to fight for our freedom. And this is part of our freedom. And this is not the way to treat people. It disgusted me. I changed a lot. My manners, my speech, everything. And that was kind of summed up on Thanksgiving dinner in 1967 with my family around. My good Catholic mom, my dad, who wore a coat and tie to dinner. And of course, during dinner, I had to say, pass the fucking bees. And my parents just went silent and looked at me, and I think that was the signal they knew I was a changed person. Back at Fort Bragg, the harassment continued. With only two weeks left to serve, one Friday evening, I was getting in the car for a weekend pass. My sergeant came running out, asking me where I was going. I explained, and he said he was canceling my pass. Fortunately, he never turned me in. And finally, I received my discharge papers. I was free. I'll never forget it. I was driving a couple buddies back home, and uh, another car was following us. As soon as we got out of the gate of Fort Bragg, all of a sudden, they just threw this handful of pills at our car. I didn't take pills, didn't know what they were, but I assumed they were speed and other things. I don't know. It was just crazy. Finally, in January 1968, I went back to work for the company that I'd worked for previously. About a month after starting work, a friend of mine came knocking on the door one evening and said, hey, let's go to Florida to surf. And I went, I can't, I just started a job. And he said, but my girlfriend's down there and there's another girl and they're playing in a band and it's good surf and I said, oh, okay. So I took a week vacation, which technically I had, um, and went down to Florida. As a matter of fact, I surfed right here where I live today, 50 years later, pretty cool. But I never could let go of the fact that I didn't return to Hawaii. I went there in March 1967, and my sister met me over there and stayed. By now, she had twin babies, and in April of 1968, I used that as an excuse to head over to Hawaii for a while. I found out pretty quickly that it wasn't for me. I was by myself, kind of far from the beach without transportation. I did get to surf pretty much but um, I, guess I kind of had rock fever and uh, I just wanted to get home. I just wanted everything to be the same, but it never was the same. Eventually I got caught up in life, marriage, family, college, career, divorce, and a new love. But through it all, I kept surfing and playing music. 
I didn't volunteer for the service, but I did take away a lot of positive things that helped me through life. Self-esteem, I've always had a can-do attitude. I'm an optimist, things could always be worse. I gotta keep things in perspective. I learned a long time ago, don't sit on your ass and complain. I learned humility, just basic things like having a toilet and water, etc. I learned the importance of relationships and a smile goes a long way. Laugh as often as you can. While I still do my best to remain positive, as with many veterans, Vietnam has changed me in other ways. A letter I wrote to my parents while still at Fort Bragg 50 years ago best summarized how the war still affects me today. Hi, received your letter today. It upset me a little. You said you missed me even though I'm not the same carefree boy I was. I've been realizing this, but believe me, it's not a permanent change. I get upset very easily now. I've got this block in my mind. I feel that life is too short and I have to cram everything into a short period of time. It's something I picked up in Nam. I'm sure I can get rid of it when, maybe when I'm discharged. In 79 days, my life begins. I have a feeling like I'm about to be born or something. When I come home on weekends, I don't want anybody making plans for me. This is about as selfish as anyone could ever be, but please have patience with me. Please forgive me for being cruel in the past. I'll probably do it more in the weeks to come. It's not one of those things I can just shake. It's going to take time, but it will improve, I promise. Thank you for listening, Willie.